As I go on YouTube, I figured I was going to do a shop tour video today. Uh, I got out here this morning about an hour ago and it was about 35 degrees. And man, it's, it's warming up pretty quick. I was going to show you guys. I've been here in this house for probably 20 something years. And back in the early 90s, I went to work. There's a big building right over there. That big building right there, they opened in 69. That's where we, it was an equipment rental store. We rented backhoes and asphalt rollers, skid steers, trenchers. Any kind of construction equipment, you name it, we serviced, sold, rented. That's where I learned to become a mechanic. And this house become for sale, a little bungalow. And I thought, how cool is that to live so close to work? And I bought it. It was a dental lab. It was zone commercial. And I've been here for 20-something years now. And right now I'm in the throes of springtime. I am so busy right now. But I wanted to show you guys, I didn't want to clean everything up real nice and then do a shop tour. I wanted to show you the mess. Uh, this is some of the things I'm working on. This, I got to deliver that this morning with that. This one's got electrical problems I'm having to deal with. Project. That Z-Master I horse traded talk to customer and selling it to me this thing is got several thousand hours on it it is just wore out i'm gonna that's gonna be a whole nother video i'm gonna replace that color engine somebody put the wrong engine on it somebody put a single cylinder it came with a kawasaki v-twin uh this i got a customer coming to get this toro uh this i have to deliver today I had carburetor problems uh but this is the shop, guys. Uh, back in the 90s, I was going to do lawn care. And when I worked across the street, we were a steel dealer. And in 1999, I bought the whole line of steel, an FC-75 uh, edger. I got the FS-85 weed eater, which has got the tiller handles, which I don't like. You can't get between cars and buildings. Uh, I bought these hedge trimmers here last year for my hedges that are over my head. Somebody gave me last year this FS66, which is pretty old, but I got it running good. And also somebody gave me this old little steel curve shaft weed eater. I got it running good, and I just use that for personal stuff. And then five or six years ago, I bought HS45 hedge trimmers, which they're pretty good, but I needed something bigger. I got so dang many pushes out there. Uh, and at the same time I bought all that in 99, I bought, how about the BR400, which, you know, all this stuff, I've never had to do anything to. I still use it every weekend. And this Toro here is my go-to. I still use it every weekend. This is an 85 model. And it was old when I bought it, and I still use it every day or every week in my own property. And this little push mower I use in the backyard, I found it beside somebody's mailbox in the trash. And I just had a little water in the carburetor and I got it running good. I didn't feel bad because they had a box sitting next to it that they bought another new mower. So, And I got me a new pressure washer last year. I needed it. Uh, somebody just gave me this Echo. So that's going to be a pretty nice little weed eater there, I believe. I gotta fix it up and see what's wrong with that, but that'll be for be for sale probably. This table, I've tripped over that two or three times. This table, I got it from Derek Weaver. It's a really nice table. I got this a couple of years ago, and I had to, you know, they haven't changed the design on this table in years, but I had to cut this piece of wood. You can see the little slit I cut in it. That way, when it's on the ground, it doesn't slide. But every tractor I pull up on it, the deck always rubs and catches on that pivot. So that's the reason I put those boards on the ground to help it out a little bit. 
Uh, here's all the parts I keep in stock. I have to try to stock as much as I can. Bridge and strat and stuff mostly. I got color up there. Uh, you know, air filters, oil filters. Uh, a lot of Honda stuff. And then there's all the Tecumseh stuff down there. All the air filters and stuff. And let's see, you always got to have a good selection of hardware. Just your basic, well a lot of this is carpentry too, but you know just little bits and bobs. You know there's all the basic, basic stuff, you know, just wire nuts and connectors and washers and nuts and bolts, different, all different sizes, you know. And you got to make sure you have all the different stuff you know there's all the power tools for doing carpentry and things you know air compressors and paint guns there's all the bigger inches I use on hydraulic lines and things like that uh, a lot of battery powered chargers and things like that uh, what I like to do what I did sharpening blades I mounted this little vise and it's about chest high. I just clamp the blade there and grab my little grinder and I just sharpen blades. It's a really easy way to do it. I, don't, I like doing it outside. I don't throw sparks all over everything I'm working on in, inside. And of course, you know, you gotta always make sure you have a lot of fire extinguishers. There's all the power tools, different hand tools. These are all my go-to tools here. You know, carburetor adjusting tools, hex tools, you know, you got your grinder. The little air compressor, I love that little compressor, but the starting capacitor is going bad. If you ain't careful, it'll snap a breaker because the engine doesn't start. You have to turn the switch on and off to get it to go. It's just getting old. And uh, different sprays, oils, you know, lots of carb. You know, I found the cheapest place to get carb spray and brake parts cleaner is Walmart. Got us only a couple dollars a can. And you just got your regular oil and cleaner. I use a lot of cleaners. I always wash the customer's equipment real good after I work on it. You know, I got my little sprayer full of purple power there. I just hose it down real good. They appreciate that. And, you know, you got to keep your fuel line. I got different sizes of fuel line. You know, you got all the different fuel line, all the two-stroke fuel line, all the different sizes. There's a bunch of different sizes two-stroke uh, filters, and you got your four-stroke filters. Of course, these kind of filters you want to use with a fuel, uh, a fuel pump engine. Of course, these are gravity-fed filters. And then you got your hose clamps and bulbs, things like that. You know, different primer bulbs. And let's see, let's go through the toolbox. You know, you got your compression testers, you got your uh, valve spring compressors, leak down testers, you got your carburetor leak down testers. That's pretty nice to have. Uh, yeah, you got your vacuum pressure uh, testers and things. And of course you have to have anti-sleaze compound you know you want to get that all over you real good when you're using it so you look like the silver surfer and you always got to have a good paint pen you know when it comes to cleaning carburetors i have found that for me this simply works the best take it apart soak it overnight uh because i haven't had a whole lot of good luck using the ultrasonic i've had it for a couple of years and i've tried different chemicals, different ways of doing it. I've, I've put carburetors in mason jars, filled that with water, tried that, different different cleaners. I've just never had as much luck as I had with, just go to the parts store and just get a gallon of that. And that stuff overnight will make it shine. It'll make it shine good. It'll get it good and clean. And then blow it out, use, uh, I like to use O23 welding wire. That stuff is really nice. And of course, you know, you've got different, you've got these different things you can use also to clean. You know, you've got these little things here that, if I can get it open. 
you know, these things are really good for cleaning carburetors. And I like using these, uh, let's see, that's a 12-point socket. These are perfect for taking the square plug to drain oil. Those are really nice. I've, I've fought over time with the adjustable wrench. But uh, up here you've got spark testers, feeler gauges, probes. You know you got your dial calipers and different gauges, and and here's all your sealants, ring expanders, clamps, and you've got your primer bulb removal tool uh, and then you got your valve guide reamers scissors these are block off plates for doing two stroke and to take your carburetor off take your muffler off and you can vacuum test cylinders and crank cases for two strokes everybody knows what that is uh, gasket material I love making my own gaskets this is rubber and then this is the gasket material uh, different compression testers, you've got compounds for lapping valves. Uh, this is always handy right here, the turkey baster. You always got to have this. Different things. This is a valve lapper. You know, you spin that handle and this goes back and forth. It doesn't go in a circle. Then you got your valve spring tools. And then this is your degree. It's not a not a torque wrench, but it's a degree indicator for torquing. That's mostly for automotive there. And of course, you've got your other valve spring compressors and more compression testers. And then you've got your piston ring expander. I can't tell you how many piston rings I've broke trying to put them on. Damn, these toolboxes are getting old. And, of course, this is the drill bit drawer. Index drills, you know, different kind of drill bit, masonry bits, Allen wrenches, all different sizes of drill bits, jobber packs. And these are my go-to. This is my go-to drawer right here. This is all my sockets, really, right here at hand. Uh, different torque wrenches, breaker bars. Uh... These are the more of the specialty tools. These are all the pullers, uh, clutch removal tools. This is a snapper, uh, broken stud removers, uh, seal removal tool, different pullers. And then you have your other specialty. This is two stroke pullers for removing flywheels and things, and you know, the cylinder homes. your basic you know you got your flywheel holders and you've got seal drivers all this all the seal drivers you'll need and then you got your deck gauge for leveling decks piston ring compressors these are this is for my real mower lapping machine which I put in storage I don't ever I don't ever lap real mowers anymore it's been 20 years since somebody's asked me to do that And then you got your paint guns. You never know when you need a big rotary hammer, winches, things like that. Well, I'll do a part two, guys. I think Mother's got breakfast started, and I will make a part two here.